It's Tobin. This is Fuzzy Tolerance screencast number 11. We're going to be looking at Tile Mill. Now, Tile Mill, which you can see on the screen there, is put out by the good folks at Development Seed. Uh, they were a big hit at FOS4G uh, in Denver. I imagine they will be again in DC. What Tile Mill is, is basically what it sounds like. It's software to make map tiles. It's pre-rendering tiles for display in, you know, the one true projection uh, uh, web mercator and, you know, Google Maps and, and that kind of stuff. I should warn you, I've never been so ill-prepared for a screencast. I was at PazCon until yesterday evening, which was a great conference and a great time. And I have really not looked at this as much as I want to, but... I want to give you a taste of what Tile Mill does, what its basic functions are, and then next month we'll do some really cool cartography stuff, or as cool as, I mean, if, if you've seen me dress, you know I'm not very good with colors. So, the great thing about Tile Mill is uh, the most recent release, version 0 0.9, is actually will run on Windows for the first time. It uh, also, for Ubuntu folks, has a PPA out there. I believe it's PPA. It might just be a regular repository. Nope, it's PPA for development C. And you can install it straight from there and, and keep your stuff up to date. It uses a lot of neat stuff in the background. Um, like I think it uses some Node.js and some MapNick. And it's a... It's really well put together, well thought out software. So let's take a real quick look. This is what you get when you start it up, and they have some really good examples. Some uh, this so uh, Open Streets DC is, is is really good, really high quality cartography. You can see a dark map example. Let's make something new. We'll call it demo because we're boring. Let's say Charlotte area demo. No description. I include the world layer and styles because we're dealing with small areas. That makes it a lot easier to figure out where your stuff is. Add that. We've got it up here. And there's basically the countries. Yippee. Now let's add some layers. Let's add... You can add something from SQLite or PostGIS or a file like a shapefile and a number of other different file formats. We're just going to add some shapefiles. Workspace, we'll grab these roads I clipped out. It'll be able to figure out the projection probably. It will reproject vector data. It will not reproject raster data because it'll take raster layers as well. Just FYI. You can add classes, and I'll tell you kind of what that does for you. Um, should auto detect the projection here. Save and style. See that tiny microscopic dot? Let me see if I can. Uh, get a little closer. The tiny microscopic dot is uh, the data I just added. So let's get on in there. And get it in there. One of the things I like to do before I do anything else is just so the next time I go in, I mean, it's set to where we were looking at before as the default extent. That's kind of a drag. So let's get on in there. Delete that center point. We're giving it basically a map extent and zoom levels and a center of the map. Let's get on in there. Oh, there we go. There I am. We want to go to like 14. And we will set the. Let's set the map extent about right there. You can put these coordinates in by hand, but you know, who in the right mind wants to do that? We'll set the zoom extents from like 14. I will say, uh, yeah, let's go 14. And we'll put the center point right about in the middle of our stuff. And we'll save that. 
That way the next time we come in, we'll know where it'll come right back to where we were and we can get rid of this countries layer. I like the countries layer just so I can find where my crap is. Because you know I, I, I have a very small crap extent and uh, I, I need to find that stuff. So let's get rid of this country styling. And let's change this to good old white map background. Now the styling you do with tile mill is CSS-ish. I mean it's basically CSS with some extras here to there to do different things like specify a zoom level, specify a query on your data. Um, so it's not exactly CSS. I think they, they must run some kind of CSS preprocessor because it has some, some syntax you would see like in lesser SAS or something like that. But here we can set the map background color and we got that plain old white. And you notice when we added our roads layer, it gave it an ID of roads. You can give it a class as well and you can give it multiple classes. What you see it did here is it made that ID of roads as treating it just like in a CSS HTML ID tag and align width and align color. And that's coloring all of our roads. Well, that's kind of dull. Let's see. Let's go. Uh, what do you want to do? First, first. Oh, good idea. I mentioned the SAS uh, uh, less, that kind of CSS preprocessor stuff. You can stick in some, you know, at symbol and a, essentially it's a variable name and some colors. And that, that's really helpful. You can put your whole color palette at the top. Any color you declare in the map, you'll see down at the bottom here. And that is essentially, I mean, that's, that's your colors. Anything you have declared in the map will appear down here. It's really handy. You can go to like color lovers or something and get a color palette made by people that know what they're doing. And use that for your map colors. And, you know, happy thing for everyone. So here's just three colors. I kind of nabbed these from the OpenStreetMaps DC style, which again is a great example style. Now with CSS, and you can have more than one style sheet, it works the same way as, as regular CSS. Uh, the last thing in wins. If I set this roads roads to line if I can get my fingers lined up line width three and save it because this is the last one in that's the last one that gets drawn now here's where you could use those classes you could say uh, you know treat those different classes as different in different ways what we're gonna do instead which is kind of the same but different we are going to do some basic querying. We're going to do roads. Now this is where Thor, oh, it's something like that. Thor, oh. <laughs> this is my data, I don't even know what it looks like. I just kind of know that's what the interstates are in our data. Here's how you can query and and essentially style to a particular a particular query. So here, you can also see your data if you look at your layers and click on the magnifying glass. It'll pull up a sample table, and you can see the the fields and, and values. That's that's very very handy. So we've got thoroughfare equals freeway. So we're just going to hit those. And let's give those, say, a line width of 9. Big, big honking things. And then let's give, what do you want to do? Do line, color, yeah, I already got one set. At highway. See, we've got this at highway up here. It's just pulling that color and shoving it in there. That's really handy. See how it's 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 a big thick thing. That's that's what we just did. Now we're going to do some fun stuff. 
you see highway symbols on a good looking website they're like 2D-ish there'll be like an outer boundary color and then an inner color let's do that now the problem is if we put in another color say we'll make it say seven pixels that way there's pixel on even either side well we just overwrote the properties we had up here that's drag that that kind of sucks so what you can do is either use a class or you can just shove right in here let's say inner and you can name it anything you want and it's kind of like a property of roads kind of like you do you know a, a hover and, and you know that kind of stuff we'll just say inner make line width of seven now this is going to be the same color one of the really cool things and i found this at uh on the open dc stuff the open street map for the dc area oh watch this too it's pretty good about picking out where you screwed up went right to line 18 and said moron so here what we've done is we've taken our highway which is this color you can lighten and darken that color on the fly which is really fantastic so you can have one color set for a road and lighten or darken in that same color band and just keep have that one color save so it's really neat. we could we could um, change this color and it would ripple down through everything that we use that reference in our style sheet very very handy so now we've got a nice 2d road uh, we've got regular roads let's change our roads default to uh, uh, I think this is like a gray yeah light gray boy that's a boring boring ugly map isn't it well uh, I, 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 I'm in a hurry so let's add a layer we'll add another shape file keep this simple I just clipped out some data Oop, hello buildings one of the neat things too is you can click this star and it'll like save that so you enter your post just stuff once and star it and then it'll be on like you know pick something or, or go to one of your favorites that that uh, saves a lot of time got buildings save and style so now we got kind of green buildings and you can see you can set opacity and line width and all that happy stuff happy day buildings one other thing I want to show you because it's, it's kind of you know like uh, uh, tile mill 101 so we did a qu doing queries up here for like attributes how you do zoom dependent stuff is say like zoom I think it's just like zoom equals let's say let's say 15 see now at zoom level 14 we got no buildings zoom level 15 high buildings zoom level 16 no buildings that's how you set zoom dependent rendering anyway we, we, we like buildings it's kind of neat there too because you're not doing you know that what kind of huge weird scaling number am I going to have to use for, for whatever crap I'm doing this is kind of like the tile set that's typical for like web mercator and everyone knows what the zoom levels for those are and you're kind of using those zoom level numbers you can see right up here in the zoom area so makes it very easy but okay uh, uh, I know it's an ugly map I know man not much time uh, hurry hurry, uh, hurry. Um, next time what I'm going to do is we are going to like style the bejesus out of this thing we're gonna have labeling pretty labeling we'll have some SVG symbols we'll do all kinds of you know scale rendering you know scale dependent stuff really take it to a well styled map so what I'll do very quickly because I'm in a hurry, in a hurry um, show you basically how tile mill works and what it's like I've been playing around with it a little bit and I gotta tell you there's a good chance we'll be changing our stack so tile mill does the all the base layer type stuff because it is that great 
One other thing we should show you is when you're ready to render this out, you can go export and there's a number of different formats. MB tiles. MB tiles, you're probably thinking, what the hell is that? Well, it's not a format per se. It is a specification. The format itself, and let me zippity doo dah back out here. The format itself is just SQLite. And it's storing the tiles and map images in SQLite. Um, it is crazy, crazy fast tile builder. Like, I took snapshots, I didn't think anybody would believe me. Uh, doing the tiles between 14 and 18 zoom levels for this beta, um, which was, makes about 4,781 images. Uh, this is uh, SQL, SQL Light Man. It's, it's, it's really cool if you're in Linux for, for screwing around with SQL Light databases. It made those 4,700 images in 11 seconds. 11 seconds. Furthermore, how it stores it in, uh, in SQLite, that file is only 17 megabytes for 4,700 images. If you have tried to build tiles as images and then copy them somewhere else, it is a nightmare. Um, especially if you're on Windows, it, if it sees that many files, it um, essentially takes its ball and goes home at some point during the copy. Now you just copy one file. The other great thing about that is, let's see, where is that? Check this out. This is Leaflet. Great, great, great JavaScript mapping library. Great, great, great. This is hitting that MB tiles. It's hitting that SQLite database and and fetching all those tiles. Oh, I zoomed into nowhere. Oh, I said I must not have set a roof on the zoom level. Beep, beep, beep. How about them apples? I mean, you know, it's ugly, but fast, smooth. Tile, uh, Leaflet does like CSS transitions and, and really cool HTML5 y stuff. And basically, all I did was this this is all, all the code for that I should say there was a PHP file that somebody or another made and I'll link to the original so so they'll get credit there are about a dozen different ways all you're really doing is uh, show you what that PHP file looks like all you're really doing is accessing that uh, SQLite database there's different ways to do it from PHP or Python or .NET or whatever the heck you want to do it with. So it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. And I will link you to where I found that if I can find where I found that. Yeah, look, we're, we're drawing tiles. There is GIS squat going on on the server end here. Squat. Buckus. It is, we are basically just rendering these pre-built tiles from a SQLite database. It's fast, it's smooth, it's, it's low weight on the disk, it's easy to move around. Great, great stuff. Now, you can, there's actually an MB Utils library where you can actually chuck the images out of Spatialite. The reason why you're going to do that, because uh, hitting a file is, is always going to be quicker than querying, querying a database and sending that out. Uh, so you could do something like package it in MB tiles and then fling it to a server or maybe, you know, an EC2 instance and then unpack it when it gets there. So it's not having to do those kind of quick SQLite database lookups. Uh, volume I work with, it probably would not make a difference, but, you know, you can, you can see what your life is like and, and maybe it's that bad. Anyway, that is a really quick... Uh, how basically how tile mill works the really joy of it I haven't touched on yet and that's all the fantastic uh, ways you can do cartography with tile mill and next time we'll do that uh, for now I am going to run screaming out of here so have a good one I'll see you bye bye